had a sleepy sleep. I had a thinky think. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this again. I rewatched one of Ethan's videos and I saw like how he how he breaks down shapes. Last night I I tried to work a little bit more on this. Um, I was struggling. I'm gonna have a quick warm up and I'm gonna I'm gonna have another little study of of Ethan's. Uh, drawing and specifically I'm gonna look at his faces again I need to like look at how he breaks faces down into shapes before he builds up detail that's the key point yeah let's see let's see what we can learn let's try and learn really real real <coughs> real quick I'm gonna learn it real fast all right I'm gonna check that I'm recording do, do I look good it's time to draw time to learn Okay, so yesterday, one thing I noticed, I saw this line here, this little this little shape, right? And I was like, what, what is that? Is that a scar? But actually, this morning, I noticed they all have one. This guy has one, and now I look at these guys, and when I was downloading these, I noticed this, right? They, they have this little shape that's, like, helping to give you, like, visual information with a minimal amount of brush strokes. Oh, I can barely see a thing. Put these in. He doesn't have time to, to, to put in lots of shading and rendering, you know, these are just sketches. Um, um, and then maybe it's also style, but I think it's maybe useful. So, you know, I'm gonna focus on the noses, I'm gonna focus on the eyes, and probably the lips, because that's kind of where I'm struggling the most at the moment with faces. I'm seeing a pretty clear, like, triangle here, obviously, but the eye socket is bigger than that. The most extreme ends of the eye, the, the two tips of the eyelids, the whole thing is contained within the socket. The eyebrow, if we touch our face, you know, there, there's a there's a pointy bit to our forehead, and then directly below the kink is where the eye socket begins. So, so how's this nose broken down? Okay, nostril one, basically just a little triangle thing. Triangle, triangle, triangle. It's very simple, but it looks very stylized. It looks very neat. So normally, like, you know, I've seen a lot of other artists, they emphasize this bit. They're like, they're like the, the big curvy bit. That's what gets emphasized, not, not the indent. And then the, oh, there's a little highlight there as well. That's subtle, but that's interesting. Look at these luscious lips. I think this wants to be broken, broken into like probably lemon wedges. So that's straight, that's curved. That's straight, that's curved. That's straight, that's curved. Yeah, pretty smart. So this is this is such a simple nose. But let's forget about all of this, right? Because this is like, okay, what, what's actually going on here? Line, boom, curve. Then we can add the nose. You know, I'm just trying to break down these faces into like fundamental shapes. Right, like really easy to draw, you know, everyone knows how to draw a circle, everyone knows how to do a figure eight, everyone can do a triangle, anyone can do a lemon. Like squares are kind of difficult, I, I wouldn't advise squares because you can you can never get them right. And and just straight lines and dots, but yeah. This get this guy's face is generally pretty angular, so I would guess that the most important part to capture here uh, is the straight lines. The other, uh, the other fundamental shape is, is an S, right? And this, this comes more from, from gestures, I guess. So I'm seeing an S here. But we can also break it into lines, right? We've got a straight line here, make it a little bit more angular, straight line here, straight line here. I think, you know, whether you go for one or the other, at that point, it's pretty much style or to do with like what you're trying to convey with the character. How did I do? Yeah, they, they look like faces. I think that one's the best, but that's also the one that I kind of traced the most. Yeah, okay, yeah, I feel warmed up. So I think, I think the next step is I need to, I need to take another look at this girl's face. I've forgotten her name already. All right, Zastanoi. Zastanoi, I need to, I need to figure out this Zastanoi lady's face, right? Because I want to learn, I, I want to learn what her face is like, and then I'm gonna have a go at actually like transferring her face onto my mask. 
So I think sort of the first thing to figure out is like, does she have an angular face or does she have a curvy face? Should, should I should I use mostly curves or mostly straight lines to draw her face? And I was I was gonna say curves, right? But actually looking at it and thinking about it, you know, there's there's a lot of there's there's a lot of straight lines here actually, apart from her lips. So let's try breaking down her face from a few different angles and using straight lines. Mostly. So she doesn't have much of an indent on her nose, right? Like not much, not much indent there. I've also noticed from from yesterday, her nose does have a very slight kind of like almost a, like a nub or something. I don't know. What, I don't know what you'd call it, right? But like, I'm I'm still not very good at doing caricatures. But if I was doing a caricature, I'd probably pick up on that. It's, it's like really subtle, but it is there. And I do want to capture it. And then I'm going to use some little, little lemony shapes for these lips. So again, we've got, you know, the eye socket begins here. That's well below the eyebrow. The area above the socket is telling us about the shape of the eyebrow. So where does her eye socket begin and where does it end? I think it's sort of around there. And there's a slight this direction to her face. All right, let's try again. I'm, with this one, I'm just gonna focus on, I'm just gonna focus on her nose and her smile. You know, you can do the pouty lips. And you make your lips look very like big and luscious. But when you're smiling, it thins out. Your lips thin out and like that can't be helped. Uh, unless you have massive lips, it's pretty much impossible to keep your lips looking super luscious while you're doing an open-mouthed smile, you know? Yeah, I think I think that's it. So I think the trick that I'm learning is to like don't focus on this bit, right? This bit, I'm always focusing on this bit when I draw noses. And yeah, it's the part that's in like the deepest amount of shadow, and so it's really obvious to want to try and draw it. And it doesn't look bad per se, but like I'm trying to I'm trying to convey as much information as possible with as few lines as possible. You know, I could I could go in like super detailed and I could be like, okay, well, you know, there's there is like this little pad of flesh here. There's a lot of structure going on here. There's a lot of triangles. Quite a lot to capture. Like it's a very it's actually quite a complicated nose when you are like really looking for all of the details. Right? It's not it's not that this it's not that these shapes aren't there. It's that you don't care about them until you do like a full rendering. The part of her nose that I really care about is this little nubbin, this this little round bulgy bit on the front, on the tip, right? I think it looks really good. I think it looks cute. I don't want to. I don't. So I don't care about this, right? Like, yes, it's there. But if I if I put a line here, even though that's technically correct, uh, I feel like it's lost clarity, right? It's this shape here. It's the shape that is like being alluded to by this line this little corner and this bit there's some crazy wind outside today i don't know if that's gonna get picked up on the mic okay so we've got our mask mask of my face and we've got our model so let's see if we can do this and i believe you ethan you you said this is like maybe the hardest part
All right, Ethan, it's day three. Actually, it's more like day five. I'm here to finish this piece, all right? <laughs> I've already finished it, because it was taking ages, but I think I've basically learned everything that I need to learn at this point. Um, and it's time to basically move on. Or it would have been time to move on, but because I was doing a redraw of a piece from two years ago, I decided to finish it properly. Basically, uh, to set a new benchmark and to see how much I've improved in the last two years. Two years ago really marks the point where I started giving a damn about getting good at art. So yeah, I was, um, so I think I, I think I successfully managed to transfer the mask and I'm pretty happy about that. That was the last part of this piece that really required like focused learning attention. Um, and after I finished her face and her hair, it was basically just moving into known territory. And so finishing the piece at that point was kind of just a formality. But yeah, filling in the rest of her clothes, you know, this is stuff that really wasn't that difficult. It just took a while. Um, and so that's why I, this, this is why it ended up taking a couple more days. Um, the hands were quite difficult actually, but the technique, when in doubty, one finger outy, uh, or more specifically the technique of just using a mitten and then carving out the shape from the mitten, that really helped, I think. And then I wanted to get some kind of more authentic looking shoes, um, because this character is in a semi-Dark Ages, semi-medieval setting. Uh, so I, I looked up some proper medieval gambesons, and I looked up some, like, Viking shoes, and... Um, and then coloring was, yeah, pretty simple, pretty basic. Um, Krita, if, if you didn't know, Krita has a great feature where it can auto-color your line art. That's what all these random colors are. And then you just go in with a fill bucket. Um, and then, yeah, doing the background... Um, I'm not. I'm still not very good at doing digital backgrounds. I've I've tried to follow a few Bob Ross tutorials over the years, but digital painting is very different from traditional painting, and the backgrounds that I do never look quite right. Um, so I kept it fairly simple on the background, uh, and I think I blended it quite a lot. So it's it's definitely not the focus of this piece. I'll figure out how to do backgrounds properly at a later date. And then shading and lighting. I, I did a first pass on lighting using basically a color dodge layer, um, which looked okay, but it really was lacking something. Um, so I came back to it on, a, on the fourth day and um, decided to add some proper shadows. Yeah, color dodging. Color dodging is useful, but only up to a point. And um, I, I definitely see why other people say like not to over rely on it. Then just adding some texture, and then yeah, I wanted I wanted to get some really strong contrast. I wanted to play with the lighting, and I wanted to like show how bright the sunlight was over the top of the hill. And uh, so the best way I could think of doing that was to just up the contrast and to to add this multiply darker values layer, and then basically carve out the light. So that's what's going on here, and um, the final result of this meant that I could f focus a little bit on her face again and capture some of the other features that were missing in the line work. So things like the shape of her cheekbones and uh, things like that. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty standard, pretty standard stuff. For me, making these two videos has been about trying to show you how I learn and trying to show in a comedic way how um, how inspiring Ethan has been for me these last couple of weeks. Hopefully it's all taken in good spirit. Uh, I really do think Ethan is making some great work. So this is just my weird way of showing support. <laughs> um, what else can be said? Ugh.